All right, I'm gonna show you how to make a Pavlov Zombies map. First, go to this wiki page for wiki reasons. Scroll down and go to GitHub to make an account. Now go back and make sure you have an Epic Games account. Then make sure your GitHub and Epic Games account are connected. Then you can go ahead and download the Pavlov custom map tools from GitHub. Now you're gonna need to download the Epic Games launcher. From here, you can download Unreal Engine. The version of Unreal Engine you'll need will depend on Pavlov. This can change as Pavlov updates, so I'll be leaving the current version in the description at all times. Custom maps can take a lot of space, so go ahead and organize this in places somewhere. Then go ahead and extract the zip's contents. And of course extract the internal zip. Go into your new files and load the project for the first time. The time that this takes will greatly depend on the power of your PC. Unreal Engine really likes CPU cores. The more you have, the better. Now you're going to need to create your UGC folder for the first time. This is where your content goes. Now go inside the new folders you've created. You now have a thingy called a definition. The definition is used to tell the workshop upload exactly what contents you have. Select this spawn point and delete it. Atmospheric fog can be useful, but I'm not going to use it in my project. This here controls the sun. We'll talk more about that later. Now's a good time to save our level. Go to the top left, File, and Save All. Take the directory into the UGC folder to save the level. Now we can name our level. All contents used for your map have to be inside the UGC folder to be uploaded to the workshop properly. If it's not in there, it won't load. Double click your definition. Pick your definition settings. As for the thumbnail, you don't have to have one, but it's recommended. The map, set it to the map name you have for the level. The hidden checkbox makes it so that it, the map won't show up in game. Don't check it, like I did. M make sure your flags are checked to these three game modes. Make sure custom game is checked and go ahead and give it a tag. Click save and close it. I'm gonna drag in a cube to start decorating my scene. Use W, S, and R to swap your transformation modes. Using W, A, S, and D while holding right click will allow you to move. Now that we have something that can cast shadows, we're gonna take a look at the sun. To start, you can set the intensity to 10, then change its color to a barely yellow for natural sunlight. This guy right here is to give us light scattered from the sky. Don't change the intensity like I did, one is actually perfectly fine. Then set its color to a cool blue. If you've ever taken a good look at shadows casted by the sun in real life, you'll notice that those shadows have a slight blue to them. I want my sun to have a different angle. If you have a slow PC, you're going to want to build lighting as rarely as possible, as this could take a while. So be more careful with your light settings. Go to the Pavlov Zombies Discord for the mod link. Go ahead and extract the mod's contents. Most recommend installing this by using a method of migration. I don't like doing that as this gives me less control over what I'm doing. I just copy and paste the contents over with an exact directory. If they're not copied over with the exact same directory, it'll break the code. You might have to restart Unreal Engine for the content to show up. Save before leaving. You should now be able to see the contents of the custom zombies game mode. Like mentioned, if something's not in the UGC folder, it won't upload. So now we need to click and drag the COD Zombies folder into the UGC folder. This can also take a while. You'll need some patience. Now I'm going to go ahead and change a project setting so that every time we load the project, it'll actually load our map. Make your way into the Blueprints folder. This is where everything you'll end up needing is stored. Though most of the stuff here you won't need to use ever. Go ahead and drag in a Zombies game logic. This contains most of the thinking for the Zombies game mode. Now go ahead and drag in the Pavlov game logic. On the Pavlov game logic, we need to set its definition to the definition we created earlier. Not doing this can break the map. I'm going to delete this floor and make my own. I want this floor to be something other than white, so I'm going to create a new texture and material. First, I'm going to go ahead and make materials folder for organization purposes. You can get your textures from anywhere online, just don't use any copyrighted material. I'm going to make my own for now. Getting a texture into Unreal Engine is as easy as dragging it in. Now for the material. Go ahead and right click your texture and click create a material. Unreal Engine is pretty good about giving it a name. You don't have to change it. A lot of assets, especially materials, need time to compile. 
There's no reason in my floor to be shiny. I'm gonna get rid of this shine. Double click the material, and here we have our material editor. Hold one, and click in an empty space to spawn a thing. This thing is a quick way to set numbers for variables. In this case, the shininess, which is specular. Most things in real life aren't completely non-reflective. This is better handled with special textures, but for now, you can set it a really low number. Make sure you press apply and save. This can also take a while. This looks good. If everything is left looking shiny, people might mistake this for a Unity game. I'm gonna go ahead and expand the structure. You can of course copy things by using Control c and then Control v then moving it. That will copy and paste. This is by no means anywhere near the professional workflow for making levels. You'll find that most Unreal Engine games are made out of models created from outside programs. Even the floors, walls, buildings, structures, all modeled outside. And then once they're all modeled, they'll get pieced together in creating an environment within Unreal Engine 4. This sounds absurd and might upset a lot of people who come from Hammer from the Source Engine, but this workflow is honestly a lot more clean, I guess. Unreal Engine's just better fitted for worlds, not levels, like the Source Engine. Make sure to leave room for doorways and zombie barriers. I'm going to go ahead and test the space for my zombie barriers by spawning a zombie barricade and fitting it in. Barricades have a little arrow on them. Make sure the little arrow faces into the map where the players play. Now I'm going to go ahead and give the zombies something to stand on. After a little more decorating, I'm going to go ahead and add some invisible walls so players can't jump off of the map. Now go ahead and add a zombie spawner. You have to drag them up off of the ground just till the capsule is off the floor. Go ahead and use the eyedropper on the zombie spawner to choose what barricade the zombies will use. I'm going to add another zombie spawner. This time, it's going to be where zombies come out of the ground, and it's not going to have a barrier. To make them come out of the ground, make sure you use the riser checkbox. If you want a zombie spawn to activate later on, you have to set it a door flag and disable active default. Think of door flags like zones. Every time you open a door, it unlocks a new zone to where zombies can spawn. The spawn room is going to end up being under flag zero. Every other room adds up from there. I'm going to go ahead and add a viable door now. These viable doors weren't made the best. There are a few changes you might want to make. Go ahead and click to edit its blueprint. Click and drag box one onto box. Click on box one and click onto its green scale value. Set it to one. This will make it so that its collision and buy area are the same shape. So that sizing this is a lot easier. You can also click onto this white cube and change what model it's supposed to be. Doors have several settings, the first of course being how much they cost. Usually, if extra settings are unneeded, you can leave them at zero. We are of course going to need to make it so that AIs can walk here in the first place. Go ahead and add a nav bounds to the map. You can press P on your keyboard to show walkable space for AIs. Walkable space is contained within these nav bounds. You can spawn multiple nav bounds to cover very specific areas or if you want areas to not be walked into, you could also use a nav modifier. Now to tell the door where to move. I recommend setting it a different number, like negative 9999, so that it would go under the map. Small numbers like 100 will only lift the door a couple of feet off the ground. Don't make my mistake. There is also a door group flag, so that if one door is bought within a group, all other doors in that same group will open as well. Even though this door doesn't have other doors to open, I give it a number anyway, just for organization purposes. We now need to set a place for our players to spawn. Go ahead and search for Pavlov spawn, and drag it in. The direction these face will depict the direction your player will spawn in. Don't let your players spawn facing a wall. Make sure the spawn is set to dynamic as well. Now copy and paste your spawn several times. You don't want your players spawning inside of each other. Even though the zombies are only meant for four players, do more than that, as even more players will end up joining anyway. Make sure you're still saving your progress. You don't want to lose any of this. I'm going to go ahead and make the rest of my doors. Now I'm going to add a mystery box. Only drag in the location version. This also has an arrow telling you which direction it's facing. Now for wall buys. Orient them so that the price is facing you. Like the buyable doors, the wall buys have scaling issues as well. You're going to have to edit their blueprints and fix that. Attach both the name of the gun and price of the gun to the default scene route. Go ahead and delete this cube. It's useless. Don't forget to compile and save. You can now freely scale this box where you grab your gun. 
and move where your name and prices are without them being stretched. We now need something to represent our gun. Traditionally, chalk drawings are used to represent the guns you can buy on walls. I'm going to make something similar to that. Again, let's drag this into our materials folder. Right click and create a new material. This new material is going to be a decal. There's a few things we have to set to make that work. Make the material domain a deferred decal. Then blend mode and decal blend mode need to be set to translucent. Make sure to apply and save. If you want parts of your image to be transparent, like actual gun chalk drawings, you're going to have to google how to do that one. Once that's set up, you can search for a deferred decal. Drag it onto your wall. This might look really weird depending on the direction it's facing. You're going to have to reorient it. Then also scale it down. The box that this contains will, well, add the decal to everything within the box. So you're going to want to shrink it really small. Make sure it doesn't pop up on the other side and make sure it doesn't consume the text either. In the right, you can then set the material you want it to be. This will be the image I just created. It's not currently facing the direction I want it to, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate the decal till it is facing it. I think I'm going to make the area of the buy zone a little smaller to fit the shape of our gun. You can of course set the gun's price, its ID, and the name you want it to display. You can find weapon IDs in the Pavlov Zombies Discord pinned within the custom maps channel. As of current, we have Juggernog. It's as simple as adding the Juggernog machine to the map and making it face the players. You don't need to do much more. You can swap out the meshes for other things if you have your own models. I felt like adding another wall by. While doing this, I realized I let my decal consume the text of my pistol, causing it to be white. I went ahead and pressed the build button at the top to make sure my level was compiled and so I can see the lighting. My shadows came out really ugly. This is due to light maps. At the top of your viewport you can press this lit button and change the visibility to light map density. This allows you to see the actual resolution of shadows on your geometry. Game engines do what they can to fake a higher resolution shadow, but in reality it looked really bad because it was really low res. To fix this you can select your geometry, check custom light map resolution, and up it a little bit. The bluer the better. You don't want this too high res, or else it'll take a million years to render the lighting, and it'll take up a lot of space on people's computers when they download your map. Red means it's really bad and you should probably fix it right away by lowering the resolution. This should be fine. I'm going to swap back to lip mode now. Then I'm going to rebuild the lighting. This isn't the greatest looking, but it's a lot better for what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and add a roof by copying the floor over. This is going to make my rooms a bit darker. I want to add a light to my spawn room. So in the lights category, go ahead and drag out a spotlight. Point lights can also be used, but the effects they have look a little unnatural depending on where you use them. If you have a lamp facing down, definitely use a spotlight, not a point light. In some cases, depending on the light, you might have a point light and a spotlight on top of each other. The spotlight to make the room nice and bright, and the point light to make the ceiling a little bit lit up. This can take a lot of playing with light to get down properly. Something you can do, which I refer to as magic lighting, is when you place really dim point lights in places that just need a little bit more light to them so players can see unrealistic but helpful to players. Go easy with them. If you're done, go ahead and press build one last time. Now to test your map. Go up here and open up the Pavlov workshop menu. Click to sync data again and go to the deployment. There are two ways to test your map. One is to use the testing tab and stage it, but that requires some odd name changing and files deep within Pavlov. It's not fun to do and it's quite annoying. So instead, I just upload it to the workshop. This is fine for me because I have very decent internet. If you don't, this might be an issue. Or if you do have fast internet, but your project is really, really big, so it'll take a while anyway, go to the Pavlov Discord and ask how to do the testing and staging. Make sure to save all. We have to close Unreal Engine before we can play Pavlov to test it. I didn't set an image in the thumbnail earlier with the definition because I didn't yet make a thumbnail for the map, but by default your workshop upload is hidden from the public, so you can still change a whole lot of settings about it before it goes to public. 
Anytime you upload an update to your map, just go to its workshop page, unsubscribe, and resubscribe, and that should force it to download it. Afterwards, I went into the definition and actually set it a name and a thumbnail. Anytime you change something in your definition, you have to press this sync data button. And there you go. You should have a Pavlov Zombies map up and running. There's a whole lot of littler things and making a Pavlov Zombies map that I didn't show you. Maybe a few details, what you can set, what you can't but this should be enough to get you started. If you have any other questions, go ahead and go into the Pavlov Zombies Discord and ask them there. I'm not that big of a brain person. Most of what I'm showing in this video is basically everything I know that is in terms of making a Pavlov Zombies map work, so I probably can't help you with too many bugs. The few times where I told you to modify blueprints might change. The Zombies mod could eventually get updates so that you don't have to do the work I asked you to do. Alright, that's all I have for you. Go ahead and go to the comments and tell me where I messed up. Thanks.